Afternoon traders, I'm Michael Sabo, Senior Market Strategist with RJO Futures here in Chicago, bringing some commentary in the energy markets. So let's get started. Uh, you know, you're taking a look here at the contract right now, September oil, which is front month. We've seen a pretty big breakdown. Uh, we were trading up above $50 a barrel. It was kind of the psychological level, and once it kind of fell below that, uh, we really just kind of seen the market under pressure. Currently, we're down about $1.76 a barrel, trading at around $49.10 right now. So still seeing some weakness in there. Nat gas bucking the trend. We're up slightly, uh, but just right around uh, a penny. So just slightly positive there. The complex is weaker though. Our Bob's off about five and three quarters cents, and the heat's off about a penny and a quarter. So certainly a weaker tone there. Now, some of the news out here today, obviously EIA data out this morning. That's kind of what the big talk has been and what kind of led to, I think, a lot of the additional weakness that we're seeing. Uh, we did see a build in the stockpiles. Now, the build wasn't that big. It was about 2.5 million barrels. But nonetheless, you know, we've talked about this in a lot of other uh, you know, updates. That we do have a lot of oil right now. So to see a build in light of weaker economic data coming out of China, uh, in, you know, the talk of the Iranian nuclear deal that that has all but been completely signed. There's a chance we could see some, we could see that possibly reverse, but right now the market's kind of anticipating that that's gonna go uh, through. And there's a lot of potential additional oil coming on the market there. Uh, you saw, you know, you look at our own equities market, we've seen weakness there the last several sessions. So all the way around, quite a bit of weaker tone and the dollar's been a little bit stronger here recently. So all of these things out there help putting pressure on the oil market. Now, the one shining, you know, light, if you will, out of that EIA data, when you look at the refinery capacity utilization levels, and I've mentioned these before, that is running stronger year over year. Currently, we're running at about 95.5% versus year ago. Refineries operating at around 93.8%. So we're still seeing strong demand at the refinery levels. The problem is, is that we've started to see a little bit of the demand side on the RBOB start to wane here a little bit. So, you know, if that continues to be the, uh, the case there, you could start to see a little bit of that demand start to slow down. Now, you know, down at these levels, though, short-term technical indicators are very oversold down here, in my opinion. And, you know, I could think there could be some opportunity here to the long side uh, of the market. So I still remain cautiously bullish. Uh, certainly, you got to take, you know, take that with a grain of salt here because we could see now that we broke down below $50, could open the room here uh, to the downside a little bit more. But I think, you know, we start to see some slight disruptions in the market or a little bit of bullish news step in. You really, it could be a nice setup here for a, a short cover rally here. So I think that's what traders want to, you know, kind of key in on, uh, utilize the right strategy to try to take advantage of that, but be cautious nonetheless. Give me a call, shoot me an email, and I give you some ideas on how you can play that. And options on futures may involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for all investors.